welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna start getting a little more into the interior of the truck. We're continuing forward with the Killing It Resurrection. I'm trying to fix anything and everything that has been broken on this thing that I've been wanting to fix for a good little bit of time. I just hadn't had the time to do it because we're trying to go all the freaking events with y'all. So now that you're up to speed, whew, I'm a little nervous, I ain't gonna lie, because apparently this job really sucks, doing the whole freaking heater core. Now let me explain to y'all what's going on, bring you up to snuff with why the heater core is even freaking broken. So back about midway through last year, I was at Plant Bamboo at a Trucks Gone Wild event, got on the tug bed, was doing my thing, letting the tires freaking rip tater chip, just getting them whoop, 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 doing that sort of stuff, throwing some diesel smoke in there, spraying some nitrous, you know, lighting them up, having a good time, dropping that pedal all the way through that floorboard like I always do. And then, uh, engine decided to catch on fire. Kind of freaking sucked, okay? Engine actually caught on fire earlier that day because I had a coolant line that burned up because those factory BS freaking coolant lines that go to your heater core, they got those quick disconnect plastic fittings like this. Yeah, those things are freaking garbage. GMC, you need to get with the freaking program, y'all, and get rid of that garbage. So anyways, had one of those little connectors break when I was in the middle of the mud hole trying to rip through, and then my firewall material, it, uh, ignited yeah my firewall material it caught on fire but from what i've been told that stuff's more like sound deadener as opposed to really like fire insulation because it it's definitely not fire insulation because i've had this catch on fire twice once in a truck tug over at the barn and then again over there at plant bamboo when i was doing another truck tug <laughs> but them truck tug awards are really hard on you huh a card you or dell because that's like my favorite thing to do that. And then sack up and get through it. Because I like doing it. Y'all like watching it. So sign me up. But anyways, we had a little engine fire. That firewall material it caught. Freaking had a good little freaking. Well, yeah, it was a little stoker. It was a nice little freaking bonfire going under the hood for a minute. They got the fire put out. Ended up melting all kinds of stuff. And then I think it was like the next week or so. I was trying to fix it. And I was like, well, I'm not going to use those crappy plastic connectors. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that connector totally off. Just shove a piece of freaking heater hose right onto that nipple that's coming through from the heater core. Basically, one thing led to another. And the heater core ended up cracking. I was trying to test fit one of the lines on there. When I went to pull it off, ding, it's got a little freaking crack in it. Now it leaks a little bit of coolant. The coolant gets on the heater core. The heater core gets hot. Gets cool and hot. And then we've got a freaking indefinite fog machine inside the truck. Anytime I've got the air on. Kind of is a little bit annoying. So, now you all know why it's broken. So now I've got to get in there and replace the heater core. I bought a brand new factory GMC heater core. As I started hitting up the old YouTube to figure out how to get the heater core out of the truck. And it's a real pain in the nut bag, okay? Basically, all the videos I watched, the guys are disassembling the entire dash of the truck. Gauge cluster, stereo coming. Like, yeah, oof, oof, makes my head hurt thinking about it. It kind of sucks. So that's what we're doing today. So... Without further ado, I'm going to climb up in the passenger seat. We'll get the time-lapse camera going for y'all so you can be on this journey with me. And uh, let's see what we come up with. <laughs> Hoorah! All right, y'all, I ain't gonna lie to you. As you can probably tell from that GoPro footage, I started getting into that dash and went, oh, shit. this is a lot more intense than I was anticipating. To pull all the parts off the truck, setting them in the back seat, that is not a job that I can do like that. So I had to take a couple days, I had to regroup because I definitely was getting a little bit overwhelmed. I was like, holy crap, this is like super intense. I gotta take apart like every freaking thing to do this. And then I started thinking, ah, maybe do I even need to replace the heater core? Maybe I just leave it alone. It'd be fine. Do I necessarily need heat? I do live in Florida. It's pretty much hot all the time. I really need a heater core. But then I started feeling pretty defeated. Like, you know what? I was going to do something. And then I freaking, what? I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't do it. So no, nah, not acceptable. Not accepting defeat. So regrouping. I got to go through. I'm going to completely organize the barn so that I can basically fit stuff. Because if y'all hadn't seen, there is a crap every freaking where there's all them axle freaking parts i got stuff from the cool from when i made the platform stuff for my golf yeah it's a mess it's a freaking mess so i'm gonna regroup so tonight i'm gonna go through and organize the barn get everything set up so that i can start pulling pieces off the truck pulling pieces off the dash and do this in a nice organized fashion so i can get the damn thing back together once i have it apart because that's honestly the biggest thing is like all right once i pull all this apart Am I going to be able to get back together? And not to mention, if you all see in those videos, I actually haven't seen the GoPro footage yet, so I don't know how clear it was. But I started pulling pieces off, 
and basically everything started breaking. All of my freaking air vents, all the ones that I have custom color match match truck, all those snapped and cracked and broke because it's all like 12 year old pieces. You figure that truck's 2010, now 2022 and that thing in the Florida heat, all that plastic is nice and brittle. So it was all looking nice and pretty, it was all functioning, was fine. As soon as I started pulling on it, every freaking clip and little plastic piece just ended up snapping off and whew, I had a hell of a time. It wasn't fun. So ain't no shame in my game. I'll be honest, I felt overwhelmed and uh, whew, had to take a little breather from it. But you know what? I'm not accepting a defeat. So I'm gonna get back at it get this place organized, then we're gonna start tackling pulling that dash apart. I'm, we're gonna do this. We're gonna get through this together, one way or another. I'm feeling pumped up now. Whew. All right, y'all, I'm freaking super tired, but we're doing pretty good. Got it all cleaned up, got all that crap out of the way, and now look at all the freaking space we got for all the parts we're about to pull off the truck. And I went ahead and all the stuff that I had already removed earlier, got all that moved into here, so now the inside of the cab is empty so I can continue moving parts. I feel like we got this. Just going to take my time, make sure I label the hell out of everything, take pictures of everything so I can put it back together. I'm going to get some Ziploc bags tomorrow so I can put all the bolts in it, label where all of them go. So I think we should be all right. I'm feeling good so far. We'll reconvene when I get back on it, hopefully in the next couple of days. See you shortly. Boom. Welcome back, y'all. So that was pretty quick. It's actually, this is the next morning. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling some more of the truck. I think today I'm, I'm going to set like little mild goals for each time I work on it. Today, the main goal is to get that center console out. It's kind of a big goal because I got the whole freaking switch panel and everything in there. Let me show you all. I have taken this center console out before, but that was many years ago. Um, what's really going to be different now, last time I took it out, I did not have this switch panel in here. And this has got freaking all kinds of stuff in it. It's got my rear steer, my self-centering, my underglow, yeah, all kinds of stuff going on. So I got to dewire all of that. Got to get everything out of the console. I got to disconnect all the wiring for the PA system. But that's kind of about it. So it's more just tedious work. So I got to go get this whole center console out. And then we can start looking at pulling the whole dashboard out. But this entire thing, I'm not going to actually pull it totally out of the truck. I watched a couple videos online where you can actually go over here, take this bolt out, take that bolt out. You got to disconnect the whole bunch of wiring under here, which is going to get intense for me because I've got all that going on, which wires a lot of stuff on my dad. There's a whole lot of wires down there. So I don't know how much of that I'm going to have to disconnect, but then you disconnect some of the body control modules and everything over there. And then you pull all these bolts out. You got one there, one there. Yeah, there's four of them. You pull all of them out, pull the same bolts that I showed you here, these top, the top one and bottom one, you pull them out over on the passenger side. And then once the console is also out, then I can pull this cover off right here. You pull that off, disconnect it. It's like a brace. I got to disconnect the steering. I'm probably going to pull this whole panel off too, this whole bottom panel. And then I got to disconnect the steering linkage. And... And there's a couple connectors I got to disconnect up here. And then there's a couple connectors I got to disconnect over there. But I think that might be it. There's not really a home. I, th I think that's pretty much it, actually. Now, that's just to get the dashboard to where I can pivot it over towards the driver's side a little bit and get enough room to be able to get that airbox out. I still am going to have to pull some bolts in the engine bay, too. I saw in one of the videos I looked up on YouTube, you got to go through, you got to pop the hood, and then on the firewall right behind the engine, there's like four or five different nuts and bolts that you got to take off. Some of them are a real pain in the ball bag to get to, but you got to disconnect all those and those will release the air box that's underneath the dash. They'll release that air box from the firewall and that's where my heater core is. I also need to disconnect, the heater core is already disconnected, um, but I also need to disconnect the evaporator as well. It's going to be very involved. A whole lot of stuff going on, especially because I got wires all over the damn place in here. But the plus side of it, I'm gonna take my time, do it right. I could probably get rid of some of the wiring because some of it's from old stuff that I don't even use anymore. Like there's some lights in here that I don't use anymore. I'm gonna clean up that wiring a little bit. So that gives a little more incentive. Another incentive to pulling this all apart, I kind of forgot about till like last night. Inside this center console, it's like actually literally right underneath here. There is a stealth box. It's made by JL Audio. And I don't even think I have it hooked up anymore because that was back when I first got this truck is when I bought that. And it sounds really good and everything for like a factory system. If you can leave your factory speakers in it, you just want to add a little bit of bass to it. The truck did have a factory subwoofer when I first bought it. But if you want to amp that bass up a little bit, you can actually pull the console out when you don't have all this nonsense going on and put this stealth box in there and it has a JL Audio 10-inch subwoofer. 
completely hidden. You would never even know it's in here. Just all of a sudden your bass sounds a hell of a lot better. So I do have that box in here because I put it in here back when I was daily driving the truck. But I'm thinking when I pull all this apart, I could probably pull that out of there because I don't think I'm even using it. I've got four 12 inch subwoofers underneath the back seat and I got two more in the toolbox in the bed. So we got plenty of subs, plenty of bass. I don't think I need that 10 in here anymore. So, and like I said, I don't even think it's connected. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. Probably be able to sell that, recoup a little bit of money that I can throw towards that engine fund. And I got another little small idea of what I could put in place of it. I'm thinking I can maybe turn that area into a storage box underneath there that I could just throw whatever the hell we need so that we can keep stuff with us and it's out of the way. It's not bouncing all over the place when we're flying through mud holes and stuff like that. I'm thinking that might be a much better use of that space. So I don't know, we'll see. I might be biting off more than I can chew by trying to fab that up too. But let me at least get this console apart and start getting the stash apart. And we'll see where we're at. So without further ado, let's get to freaking wrenching, yo. Whew, all right, y'all. Well, phase one of this journey is complete. Killing it switch panel has been removed. Super freaking killing it. And went even a step further. Went through and labeled each one of the wires. So I'll be able to hook all that back together. But see, see, this is just the first beginning stage. You see why this job was giving me anxiety when I first started looking at doing it? Yeah. So next we're going to start getting this console out. Now to get this console out, I don't entirely remember how to do it because I haven't done it in a couple years. But I think I got the gist of it still. Um, it's not really rocket science. So let me show you. Basically, I got to take those three screws out, pop the cup holder off, and then inside the console there's a couple screws down here in the bottom of it once i get those out then there's a little bit more wiring i got to disconnect i think it's up inside there if not i'll be able to access it right next to the gas pedal there but uh it's the wiring for this and it's the wiring for my five position switch because i gotta disconnect that wiring and then this whole center console should pop right out and fight Now that I started tinkering with it, I remember the couple things that I had forgot. So the only reason I gotta take that cup holder out is because generally there's two screws that go in here. But apparently sometime during the customization process of the Killin' Mega Truck, those screws are no longer with us. There's also some screws that are down here. They're basically like right here, right off to the side there. They're right in this little cavity. There's a screw in here. There's also one further back, like right back in here. And one here, and one here. Then this console should come right on out. So some of the screws are missing because I've had this truck for 12 years and it's been to a few different shops throughout my ownership of it. Apparently some of the technicians maybe got a little lazy with putting the screws back. Or it could have been me when I was working out one time or another. <sighs> Let's go ahead and get this console out of here, folks. <laughs> y'all the center console has officially been removed bam and then i just had something really cool happen just so happens that i went and pulled this wire and uh but bam she's not connected at all so there's not gonna be any change oh look at that and everything's loose what the hell yeah so looks like that sub box can come out of here and i can post that and hopefully sell it to a lucky customer that will want to have a 10 inch jl audio good quality subwoofer in the truck because it still works fine i just disconnected because we kind of surpassed a single 10 inch stealth box when we've got six 12 inch subs in here and like 12 8.8s and i don't know a whole freaking ton of tweeters yeah we kind of surpassed that one single 10 if you hooked it up i don't even think you'd be able to hear it so looking the glass half full we've got some more money to go towards the motor fund i know my sponsors helped me out a bit but it's still not for free i still gotta pay some so that's going to help go towards that motor fund a little bit. And I'm going to get some free space in my console. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm looking at this as a freaking win. So now I think the next step I'm going to do, I'm going to get this freaking sub box out of here. I'm fairly certain that these bolts right on up yonder. We got one there and one over there. I'm pretty sure that's what's holding that freaking sub box in. So I'm going to loosen it up and see if it comes loose. I hope it does. And just like that, the freaking sub box is out. See, that's how you know JL Audio is a good company. I was buying their stuff before I was even sponsored by them. Make good quality stuff. Look at that. That's a freaking stealth box. That thing's freaking sweet. And just like that, the center console is out. Not only the center console out, but we got that freaking sub box out that I don't even use. Look how much room for activities there are. That's going to make hooking up wiring and everything so much easier having all that empty. 
thing that does kind of blow is the uh, bolts that bolted that thing down. One one right here and one one right here. I'm going to have to go ahead and patch those holes up so I don't get any water in the truck. But, dude, there's like tons of room underneath that dash now. Get out to where you can get a full. Yeah, that's all empty space now under there. Hell yeah. Super killing it. All right, y'all. Now the console is out. And now it's time to start moving forward with getting this dash out. So, from the videos that I saw on YouTube, the only thing steps that I really know I got to do, I know I got to disconnect these couple wires that are up here on top of the dash. I got to pull that bolt, that bolt, and so on and so forth. There's four of them all the way across. I got to pull these two bolts. I got to disconnect that uh, brace right there. And then there's some body control plugs that are underneath this dash that I got to disconnect. And there's a couple over on that side. My airbag, as you can see, I've already disconnected. Um, I run around with that disconnected because I don't want that thing ever going off in my face when I hit a mud hole a little too hard. Um, but I'm not sure what else has got to be dis disconnected. This is kind of where it might start to suck a little bit because I've got so much like custom electronic nonsense going on in this truck. And all of it I use, and none of it's unnecessary. I guess it's wrong to say that's nonsense. I use all of it. But there's so much crap going on that... I know there's a lot of factory connectors I got to disconnect, but I'm not sure how much of my aftermarket or add-on stuff I'm going to have to disconnect to. But I'm going to go ahead and remove all those bolts, and then everything else should kind of present itself that I've got to remove. So, And here we go. Now that I got that panel off underneath the steering wheel, now there's a little bit of duct work I guess I got to remove according to the video I just watched. So I got to pull that little pin right there. It's like a little clip. And then this entire duct work should come right on out. So that's the next step. Now I keep referring back to this video on YouTube. This guy is taking apart a 2009 Chevy Silverado, which is a little different than my truck, but I mean, a lot of this stuff seems to be lined up. So he says that the next thing I got to do is I got to disconnect the steering. Now he's doing on a factory like daily driver truck. So he's really worried about the clock spring breaking and the steering wheel. Mine's already broken because I got hydraulic steering. So, you know, anybody that's familiar with hydraulics, you guys will know like how the hydraulics, they kind of skip a little bit, kind of like in a boat. Sometimes they'll skip a little bit here and there. So we've already broke that clock spring a long time ago. You know, actually, you know who I think actually broke my clock spring was Cletus McFarlane, believe it or not. <laughs> Damn, is that bad? I'm scooping her off the floor and giving her a rip back down. He loves that work rip. He was over at JH Easels when we first made this thing a roller. And he was helping us bleed the steering and bleed the brakes. And I'm fairly certain that he broke the clock spring. Luckily, he didn't send the airbag off or nothing. But when he was spinning the wheel around, he's like, oh, I just heard something. And I wasn't worried about it. Anyways, we kind of figured it was going to break and it's not the end of the world. But I definitely am not going to replace it because with hydraulic steering, it's going to go through. And uh, yeah, I'll end up on a break in it again. So I'm not overly concerned with the steering wheel rotating or not. But just because I don't want to have any excessive complications, I went ahead and did the same thing the guy did in the video and put a piece of tape on there so that it'll at least tell me that the steering wheel is staying in the same position. But now I've got to go underneath the dash here. So this bolt, it's, uh, where is it? It's in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Right where my socket's at. So I've got to go ahead and loosen up that nut and then pull that bolt totally out. And that will allow the steering to separate. So that's the next step. All right, y'all. So now that the steering's disconnected, the next step, I got to start unplugging a bunch of electrical connectors. I started pulling these out. I already pulled this one, this one. I got to pull this one. Got to pop all these wires loose. I think this triggers my aftermarket uh, roof lights, my uh, clearance lights that are up on the roof. So I'm going to have to just clip that wire and then put like a spade connector on it so I can remove it. And then I'll be able to reconnect it when I'm done. And then underneath here, there's a bunch of body control plugs that I got to disconnect. And I also have to disconnect the shift cable as well. I guess that's... Oh God, this is, yeah, this is where it's going to kind of start to suck a lot because I've got a lot of aftermarket crap that's all over the place here too, but I'm going to start disconnecting. I got to disconnect all these plugs here and all these, probably going to have to take all this loose. This is all the stuff that triggers my nitrous. Just take it loose so that it's got some play to it. So I'm going to start disconnecting all these plugs and then we'll reconvene. All right, y'all, I'm not sure how much longer we're going to be able to work on this because it's starting to rain here. But now I got the got the shift cable disconnected. I got all those clips disconnected over there on the driver's side of the truck. Now I'm over on the passenger side and I'm gonna start disconnecting all these wires that hook up to the dash. 
hooks all these guys all right here. My airbag's already disconnected. I think that's it though. I think it's just these couple guys. All right, now that I got all these plugs disconnected, now we're saying I gotta go underneath here to this little module and this has gotta be disconnected. All right, y'all, according to my buddy on YouTube, we are just about freaking done as far as getting it out. And I'm not gonna lie, this is giving me some ideas. I might change up the interior of this truck a little bit because I am digging how much space there is. I mean, the console is kind of nice, but I'm almost thinking I might do away with that whole freaking factory console and get something built that doesn't take up as much room because it makes the truck seem so much bigger inside without all that crap there. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll put it back in. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna think about it, but it's definitely a potential idea. So, but we got two more bolts according to my YouTube buddy, and I'll show you where they're at. They're right on. Apparently they're real Oh, I, I can see it. I can see one of them. Oh yeah, they're right there, okay. See that bolt right there? Gotta get to that one, and I gotta get to that one. There's two. Once I pull both of those, and then I think I got, I still gotta disconnect these couple connectors. There's one here, one here, and there's a couple over there. But once I do that, I think this dash can come out. So let me get those loosened up and we'll see. Um, I think it, that, that's it. Now the whole goal here is to be able to get this air box out. It's right underneath here. There's a whole box contraption right there and that's where my heater core is. And that again is why we're doing all this. Well, y'all, the dashboard is so, yeah, I kind of like, I started getting scared. I'm not going to lie. I didn't want the dash to like fall and get all damaged. So I was like, well, I'm going to get me a strap and kind of MacGyver it up here onto the A-pillar so that it will kind of hold the dash up a little bit. And it gives me a little more room to be able to swing it where I need to. I can kind of move it a little bit, but man, this has been intense. I'm super like pumped that we got, that we're getting it done though. Definitely feel good about it, but this is a lot of freaking work. But there's a lot of pluses to doing this too. So here's some more thoughts I got. Remember I, told, I just told you about the idea I got with the console here. And it is a plus that I got that subwoofer out that I haven't been using in like two or three years anyway. So that's out of the truck. But also my airbags are still in the truck. Like here is the plug for one of them. I unplugged them all, but I'm gonna see if I can get that damn thing out of here because that does make me nervous. Like if for some reason, I know there's no power going to it or nothing because it's disconnected, but if that was to ever go off and break my face as I'm freaking driving, especially after I went through all that surgery, like freaking last year to fix my face all up. Y'all didn't know about that. Well, now you do. I had a really bad underbite, so I it broke my jaw and it was a big mess. Here's what I look like. Yeah, that, that's a freaking x-ray of all the steel that's in my face. So if I had an airbag go off and screw all that up again, I would not be happy camper. So I'm going to see if I can get this crap out of here while I have all this apart. But back to the, the heater core though, the, the problem at hand, that is the box we need to get out right there. So there's like four or five bolts that I have to get to from the engine bay, but they basically bolt from the firewall to this. And then I can get this box free. And really what I'm going for is that access door right there. That is where the heater core is. So once I can get this box free enough that it'll just back off here a little ways, I can take that cap off of there pull the heater core out and ba boom we've replaced the heater core but i'm not just going to replace it i'm going to talk real nice to the mad scientist because here's what i'm thinking i don't want to put that heater core in there and have it potentially break again that would suck so as we all know well my friends talk smack and say i'm a rim rider but as some of us know i might go blasting through a mud hole after i'm freaking feeling a little spunky at a mud bog and i do not want to break that freaking heater core again that would suck to have to go do all this again. So I'm gonna talk real nice to the mad scientist, see if maybe we can weld that thing up, maybe add, do whatever we can do to make it so we'll never break again. I tried to ask him about it like a couple days ago and he said, well, the whole reason why it broke is because you were yanking on it. And uh, he's right, he's not wrong. And I, right now let me go into that real quick because I didn't get a chance to earlier. I kind of dove right into this. So I didn't really explain too thoroughly why this broke so let's go over to the engine bay i'm going to show you where those bolts are i got to pull to be able to get this box out and then i'm also going to show you why this whole catastrophe freaking happened so for starters we're going to go over why the hell this happened so back in here see those two two uh pipes that are coming through the firewall right there so that is my heater core now if y'all been watching my videos you would already know some of this backstory but i'm gonna fill you in i'm gonna learn you real quick 
So basically, short version of it, we were at Plant Bamboo doing a mud bog. No one was going through this mud hole. So I was like, I'll do it. I don't care. Let's go. And I asked freaking slow motion Alan. He said he'd pull me out if I got stuck. So I go dropping the throttle, ripping through the hole. And not really ripping. I was kind of bogging through the hole. And then all of a sudden, I started dumping white smoke out of the hood. And come to find out that there's these factory connections that GM, I don't know if it's just the GM. I don't know if there's other uh, manufacturers that have this problem too. But where these hoses connect onto the heater core, it's like this plastic quick connect type garbage ass thing. And with that connector being plastic and being like 12 years old, and with how hot my engine has got a few times, if you all seen my truck dog videos you've seen, I've overheated her more than one time. And I, I probably contribute to why that engine's dead. But um, anyways, with the engine getting so freaking hot, it got that plastic cut to where it was kind of brittle. And for whatever reason, when I really got on it in that hole, I don't know if it was the engine was getting really hot when I was going through that mud or what exactly caused it. But one of those lines let loose and started dumping cooling out everywhere. So I shut the truck off real quick because I didn't want it to overheat. Got somebody to pull me out. We got back over to camp and JH actually came over to laugh at me and pick on me. But I was also able to ask him what I could do to get the truck up and running because I still had freaking some mud ball going I want to do. Still had some truck tug of war I wanted to do before I went home. So he showed me how to bypass the heater core. So basically what the coolant does, it runs through your heater core because it's hot from the motor, goes through, it's like a little mini radiator. I'll actually show you guys the new, well, you're, you'll see this heater core when I pull this old one out too, and you'll see the new one. But the coolant goes through that little mini radiator and that little mini radiator is mounted inside of your dash. So it's running air conditioning, or I guess it's still considered air conditioning, air through that radiator. So it's that air is getting heated up by that heater core, which is heated up by your engine. And that's what's making you have heat in your truck. But anyway, so I had bypassed the heater core for a little while, for a couple weeks. And then I got bored at my house one day. I'm like, you know what? Let's fix that thing. Why don't I go ahead and uh, I'm not going to put factory crap plastic lines back on there. I'm going to put some sweet rubber hoses on there. And I'll just shove them over those heater core nipples and put like a T-bolt clamp or like a worm gear clamp on it. Clamp it down. Should be good to go. I'll have heat again. So I did that and I thought everything was good. First time I went to an event, I freaking turned on the air conditioner. And as soon as the truck got hot, oddly enough, we got like a bunch of fog or smoke inside the truck coming out of the air vents. So I figured that the heater core was maybe have was maybe leaking something was going on so came home that next day took those lines off and got a little bit tighter hoses and started shoving them on there so it was really a pain in the butt i think i had one size too small of hoses actually trying to get them on the nipples of the heater core but i got it on like partially but i couldn't get it on all the way so i'm like all right well this isn't going to work i got to come up with another another plan another plan of attack so I went to go pull the hoses off and they were like stuck on there. So I'm like, all right, they're not on there enough to be able to put a clamp on it, tighten it up, but they're also not loose enough that I can get them back off either. I was kind of in a pickle. So I just used my man muscles and yanked the damn hose off. And I think when I did that, I damaged the heater core because the way these heater cores are designed here, I'll grab that other one. I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Hang on one sec. So this right here is the new heater core. See, it's like a little mini radiator, but I... If I had designed this, I would have designed it a little more robustly. I would have charged another $40 for the vehicle and put something quality in there. I mean, it's kind of cool how it's like a little radiator and all, but the look at the way the connection is. It's like half assly crimped on there. So what I'm thinking is when, so I had the hose, like I said, I had that rubber hose was shoved onto here. It was partially on, not past this rib, but it was on here. I yanked it off and this whole freaking edge here all ripped off. So this whole nipple came off with the hose. It was stuck in the hose. It like broke right there, I guess, where they crimp it to put that rib in it. So that was part of the issue, but I still had enough meat there. There's still plenty of pipes showing through that I was able to put a hose on it. So I figured I was good there, but I think when I was yanking that hard on it enough to be able to break that freaking end off, I think I yanked that loose and it kind of came loose in the crimp because the mad scientist has told me that there is an O-ring inside of here and that's what keeps this sealed up. So I think I might've pulled that loose and it's probably putting coolant inside the truck whenever I have this hooked up. So that's why we're doing all this. I hope you all learned a little bit there. That was a lot to explain. But now, back up to the engine bay. Let's continue forward with getting that box out. Let me show you the couple bolts that my buddy on YouTube says I gotta pull off. Apparently I've gotta pull that bolt out of that hole. And then there's like a nut back inside there. I gotta pull the nut off of that. And what else did he say? Oh, he said there was a bolt down there See it right right above that drain right there? Got to take those two nuts loose to take the dryer loose. And then there's a bolt back there. See it right in the middle of the screen there, that little like shaded circle. There's a bolt head in there. 
and finally there is one right back there see there on the firewall so i'm gonna pull all those and that should get that freaking box loose to where i can pull it far enough off the firewall that i can slide the heater core out of there Whew. we're getting there freaking pump All right, y'all, so I got all those nuts and bolts off. Now, box still will not come free. So I watched a little bit more in the video, and apparently this guy had the same problem. There's one more stud that you cannot see from up here in the engine bay, but you can see from down here. i show you. I'm going to learn you real quick. It's back. Where is it? I just seen it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull my stack pipe back off because I think that will make everything much easier. So hang on. Stay tuned. Well, y'all, I uh, went to go pull the stack pipe and had a pleasant surprise sitting in the bottom of the freaking stack. Let me show you. Hang on one sec. Let me hop down. Well, before I hop down, there's a little uh, hint on what the hell was in this thing. All right, y'all. So let me come on over to my drain buckets and I'll show you what was in my stack. Y'all ready? Potentially could be part of the motor, but it's definitely full engine oil. Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to do that. Now back to where we were. Now that I got the freaking stack pipe out of the way, it smells like engine oil over in this part. But you can see that last stud I gotta get to. She is right, right there. Right there, see her? See her? Pork, porking out right there, right freaking there. So I've gotta get my ratchet up there. And then I think that box will come free. All right, y'all. Well, that should be it. I should be able to pull that box free now. Let's go see. Dude, I freaking got it. Yeah. The box is loose. Hell yeah. Freaking did it. We freaking did it. We did it, yo. Yeah. Super freaking pump. I'm freaking stoked up. Are you stoked up? I'm stoked up. I was able to get the box free. And there's where the heater core came through. So now I just got to take off this lid. And that heater core come right on out. Yeah. Pumped up. So I'm pretty sure those bolts are 7 millimeter. Maybe a little bit smaller, but I think they're 7. So I just got to take that cap off and I can slide that heater core out. Raw for killing it. Yeah. Well, we got the damn heater core out, but now... Oh, that really sucks not having a house that is equipped to do this sort of stuff. Because now, as you can see, it's freaking raining. And I can't get the damn door shut because the dash is all apart. Oh, son of a bitch. So, I think I'm going to have to put a tarp over the whole cab of the truck to keep it dry while it's raining. Always something. All right, y'all. Well, here core is out of the truck. I uh, was able to scramble and get a tarp over the cab. I can't get that freaking door shut with the dash all being like halfway off. So it looks like I had nothing but a bunch of storms at brewing. If you look out pretty much everywhere, except for back there, but it's all coming from that direction. So I think I'm gonna call it a day because I do want to reconvene with the mad scientist. Now that I have that heater core out, I want to figure out what we want to do to the new one to beef it up so that I will not have this problem ever again. So hopefully, I'm thinking, like we talked about a little bit a couple days ago, we might weld some AN fittings onto the end of it so I can just like screw an AN hose right onto it so it'll be threaded, there'll be no pulling or yanking, no potential for leaks or anything like that. So we might do that, but I'm gonna see if he can do anything else to try to make this thing be super robust. So here's my two heater cores. That's the one I pulled out. And this is the brand new one, directly from GM. Now, I honestly am not even totally convinced that this guy was leaking because it's still got coolant in it and everything. And the box that I pulled out of does not have any coolant in it. So I might not even have been leaking. Maybe this was premature. But so that you guys know kind of what initiated all of this. When I was pulling those coolant hoses off of here, those aftermarket ones, it's actually made out of this stuff, Marine wet exhaust hose. Got it over at West Marine. Um, when I was shoving this stuff on there, originally I had one size smaller. So it was really snug fit getting it over top of here. 
and there's no nipple or ridge or any, well, originally actually there was, there was this kind of ridge right here. So I was gonna use that to kind of help lock the hose on. So it was here and like the whole piece is missing now because I was shoving the hose on there and couldn't get it on all the way. I only had it on like that far and not enough to be able to get a good secure fitment. It wasn't even past this little rib that they put in it. So when I was trying to get it off, I freaking he man the damn thing off like an idiot and ended up ripping off the entire tip. Like it broke right here where they put this rib. So the whole tip is missing and it was stuck in the end of a piece of this hose. So I had to cut that off, scrap that piece of hose and then regrouped, put the hose back over top of here, shoved it on as far as I could go and then put a T-bolt band over top of it. Well, I figured that maybe that was leaking because frequently whenever I was like doing a truck tug of war or something, when the motor would start to get hot, even having had a couple mud parks too, because this was broken for a few months. When I'd be at a mud park or something, as soon as the motor got a little hot, if I had the AC going, all of a sudden I'd get this fog coming out of my AC vent. Now, hindsight's always 20-20, and I think I figured out why the hell that was happening. I don't think it had anything to do with the heater core. So I may have prematurely pulled the heater core out. But regardless, it's nice to have a fresh one in there anyway. But what I think was causing that fogging coming out of the vents was my drain. I put it on one of the forums online, asking some people their opinion of what would be causing this, if it was the heater core or what they thought it was. They said it was probably a blocked drain. Now my drain is over here. Let me show you. It actually was coming through this hole. Apparently it's attached to that box still and it's inside the truck now. I didn't even realize I pulled it through. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's a little dark, but there's a hole right here and it was coming right through here. That drain somehow was turned upward. It's like an elbow and it's supposed to be just dripping straight down. Somehow it got turned like up. I'm not sure when it got turned. I don't know if maybe that happened. It, I don't think it happened over at JH Diesel's place because it was doing this prior to my truck even going over there. I'm pretty sure. So I don't know. Maybe I bumped it when I was screwing with something or maybe it got knocked when we were washing the truck maybe. But apparently that whole little elbow swivels and it was swiveled around upward. I think that might have been causing liquid and condensation to collect in the truck rather than have it drain out. So that might have been causing excessive condensation to be in the air conditioning system, thus giving me a whole bunch of freaking fog out of my vents. But on a different note, I did speak with the mad scientist and we did decide we're gonna go ahead and put the factory heater core in from GMC. We're not gonna do any alterations to it at all. Mainly because it doesn't even look like I cracked the heater core. So some of this might have been a little bit premature. I'm definitely glad we still took it all apart because I wouldn't have known that it wasn't cracked unless I did all this. Plus I got a brand new fresh one in there to go with. But when it comes to welding on that thing without affecting those O-rings that connect the pipes onto the heater core, it's just gonna add a whole lot of complication. Plus, if we did happen to spring a little pinhole leak when we're welding that up, we wouldn't know it until we put it back in the truck and pressurize the whole nine yards. So then I could be putting more coolant in the truck. And as we can tell right now, there's no coolant in the truck. I wasn't leaking any coolant into the airbox or anything. So I think we just leave well enough alone. We're gonna go ahead and put the factory heater core back in, but we are gonna eliminate those plastic BS freaking connectors. After looking at those new PPE coolant lines that I've got, they actually don't even go up to connect to the heater core anyways. I do have to add in a section because those PPE coolant lines are designed to have a truck with an EGR still. Well, I don't have an EGR anymore. So since I'm bypassing the EGR, I still am gonna have to add a little section of pipe. It's gonna go from those PPE coolant lines to the heater core. So I think I'm just gonna use a rubber hose. We're gonna go ahead, we'll be able to easily get it on that heater core because the engine's gonna be totally out. We're gonna do this when the engine's out and we're doing the engine swap. So I'm gonna be able to easily get those new hoses up onto the heater core. I'll put a nice T-bolt band clamp on it. And I think we should be ready to rock and roll. Shouldn't have any more issues at all. So that is the game plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and get back on out here and cut this tarp open. And we're gonna get back to reinstalling this new heater core. Well, first step of the process is complete. You look right on down over this a ways. Bam, brand new heater core is in the box. So now I just need to put the lid on it, put them three little screws on there. There's a the lid back there. Put the lid on it, put the screw, three screws back in it, and then proceed to get this thing back onto that firewall. Get all these fittings pushed back through. And then, dang it, that's gonna suck. Then I gotta try to put all those bolts and screws back through the firewall to reconnect that box to the firewall. Which those screws were kind of easy to get out, but they are not gonna be fun to put back in because they're gonna be really hard to reach. Yeah, I had, one of them I had like a five, I had five freaking ex socket extensions stacked onto each other. But it was like huge, like this long, to be able to reach down in there, so I don't know. We're gonna figure it out though. I'm, I'm feeling spunky, we're getting this shit done, I'm telling you. For reference, these are 5.5 millimeter screws. 
And there's three of them that hold that box lid on. I don't know how detailed I got when I showed y'all when I was taking it apart. Alright, new heater core is in. Now I gotta get that box back up to that firewall. So one thing I did just notice that I do want to mention to y'all, I mean, I would imagine if you're doing this job, you're probably going to be looking at more videos than just mine, hopefully. They're probably going off of uh, consulting someone a little more knowledgeable than me since I'm figuring this out as I go. But, almost screwed this up hardcore. That would have sucked. Make sure when you're freaking putting that air box back against the firewall, you're paying attention to that freaking drain because that was almost pinched up in there. That little hose sticking out with the 90 degree to it. That was almost pinched up in there, and if I wasn't paying attention, I could have tightened all these bolts down and left that screwed up, and literally the only way to fix it would be to take this whole thing back apart. So make sure that drain is out and freed up and pointing where you want it to go. Then you gotta start tightening the nuts and bolts back up. All right, y'all, well, just like that, bag number one of bolts, firewall two air box, freaking well, almost done, just about done. But I will also welcome you to the first pain in the butt of the evening. I somehow need to get this here bolt. This is the one I was talking about that I had all this freaking attachments hooked up to be able to reach it. It goes way back there in that hole. And that is a good little distance. I think I can reach up in there though. If I hop up here on top of the engine, I can get in there. Pretty sure. But then after that, I just gotta do that. And then I gotta tighten those two nuts right there. And everything's good. I got that bolt put back in. I got the one right here. I got the nut right there. I got that other bolt that's behind the dryer. Got that installed. Got that nut put back right there. I got that bolt put back right there. And that is it. So let me tighten these couple things and then we are done in the engine bay for right now. And look at that. We got plenty of freaking pipe. Damn it, I cannot get this camera in here. Let's see, how about like this? There we go. Look at that. So we got brand new heater core sticking through and that'll be super accessible, especially when we get this freaking motor out of here. So I'm gonna leave it disconnected for a little while because I'm not really gonna need it for these couple of shows that we're gonna be doing. So I'm just gonna leave that disconnected, just leave it poking through, won't hurt nothing. But then when the engine's out, we'll be able to get coolant lines on there, get them nice and tight and secure with some T-bolt clamps. Should be super bitching. So I'm gonna tighten these up and then we're back into the cab of the truck. All right, y'all, well, we're done in the engine bay pretty sure at least for now um now it's time to next step i if i remember the order of everything i think i gotta get the dash up onto the freaking firewall now but before i do that i kind of i'd like to get this damn airbag out of here honestly because it just makes me nervous having it in here i don't ever want it to go off and like hurt somebody if i hit a mud hole too hard or if we're ever doing a any kind of like tri truck challenge or something like that and i'm kind of getting on it i don't want the airbag to go off but I'm a little scared to even be screwing with it too because I don't want it to go off with me messing with it. It's right there. That whole apparatus is it. So I just unplugged it. But um, I think maybe I can take those, see those four bolts, like all the way around. I think if I take those off, I can drop it out. But I'm kind of nervous. I don't want it to go off. I think I might try it anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking because I don't want to take this apart again anytime soon. So I think I'm going to try. Wish me luck. Dude, I freaking got it out. Super kick ass. So sorry I couldn't take y'all on that journey with me, but uh, I actually had to FaceTime my good buddy Jamie, guy who works over at the Cadillac place that knows everything about GMCs and whatnot, especially this intricate shit that I don't know anything about. And boom, we got the airbag out. The little, so he says that this thing I just pulled out is actually a live explosive. So I need to be careful with it. But it's freaking out of the truck. And then, yeah, I'll, kind of, I'll, I'll take you through what I did real quick. It, it actually wasn't too terrible. So there was four bolts. One was right there in that hole. One was back there in that hole. And same on this side. One back there on the metal piece. And one in the more close hole. And they just were... Got one of them here. It was just little 10 millimeter bolts. So I just took all four of those out. And then I had to drop the glove box out. I saw the guy do that in the other video. And I didn't know how the hell he did it. There's like a little tab right here. And if you just pull it, pull down on it, it'll give enough room for the glove box to move past the catch. And then the whole glove box will drop down. So I went ahead and dropped the glove box down and then just reached up in here after I had those four bolts out and then just started kind of pushing. 
And as I started pushing from underneath here, started pushing up, you can feel where the airbag is. You can see where my hand is right there. I was just pushing on that. And then this cover started to lift. So I just shoved my fingers underneath that cover, kind of popped it up a little bit. And that's actually this cover right here. Just shut, I was just putting my fingers like around this lip right here and kind of pulling it up. And eventually the whole thing just kind of popped free. Came out just like this. And then those couple of nuts that I was taking off, I was doing it right. I just took off the other two, these little brackets right here that were like kind of holding it on like this ish. I think it might have been like that. Yeah, I just pulled, took those off, and then that whole canister just slides right out. And now it just has the bag in it. The whole actual explosive part of it is out of the truck. Super freaking cool. I honestly would have probably almost taken the truck apart to this point just to get that airbag out of there because that freaks me out, hurting people and having it potentially go off. I know I had them unplugged, but I don't trust that. So sweet now so the actual like dead bag and the cover i'm going to put that back in the dash and bolt it back in that way the dash doesn't have a massive hole in it but we got a freaking airbag out that is super cool so now there's no more airbag at all on the passenger side of the truck so i'm going to put this cover back in though and then potentially see if i can shove this dash back onto where it goes because then my doors will shut in the truck which would be pretty cool not to have this stupid tarp over it anymore. So so that's what I'm doing now. All right, y'all, now that I put the bolts back in, you can see what they look like before I took them out. They're those two, that one and that one. And then right through this hole, there's that one and that one. And that's right through that plastic trim piece that I broke a couple days ago when I was pulling this whole dash apart. Now that I've got all that out, now we can go ahead and start putting the dash back up on the firewall. All right, y'all, well, I got a little freaking dark last night, and I couldn't see what the hell I was doing, but I didn't want to run into an issue where I was pinching a wire, or I couldn't see something, so I figured I'd call it a night. So now we're back at it today. Now, before I go ahead and shove this dash back on here and start bolting it back in, there's only a couple opportunities you get to see the backside of this thing, so in case y'all were interested with the backside of a 2010 2500 HD GMC SLT truck looks like, you're going to see real quick. There we go, so that's where that airbag cylinder was that I pulled out last night. But lots of wiring from my stereo and all. Hopefully nothing over there got screwed up when I was pulling all this off. I hope not. But hmm, pretty interesting. A lot of stuff going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and shove this thing back up on this firewall though. See if we can get her bolted in. So now we're back over here to the driver's side. I'm thinking my plan of attack, because generally you need two people to do this, but I'm a solo man mission today, as usual. So I think what I'm going to do, this side I got kind of pretty close to lining up. I think if I put this bottom bolt in here, then that should support it enough that I can then go over to that side and shove that side all the way back on and take that strap out of there. Then we should be good. Then I just got to basically reverse all the processes that I did. I got to put those two bolts right in the top of the dash there. Got two that go on the side. Got the brace down there. What else was there? Oh, there's four that go across the top here. There's two on that side right by right below the A-pillar. And I got to make sure, another thing I'm kind of keeping in mind is I got to make sure I hook the steering back up when I put this back together too. Where is it? You can see it. See it hanging down right back through that little window right there? So that has got to go and connect to the steering wheel, but I don't even see where that part of the steering wheel even is. I don't know. I guess I'm going to kind of figure it out as I go. That's a wrap on our freaking heater core replacement video. Uh, I don't have the truck completely the rest of the way back together because I don't want to put it back together yet because I'm not sure what I want to do about the center console. Um, I've really been toying with the idea of having Ryan at SRQ Customs help me build some kind of a center console that is a little more low profile. We'll still have my switch panel right here, maybe some cup holders, but I don't know. I still got to do some thinking whether or not it's worth doing all that or if I should just put the factory one back in. But other than the center console, there's like a trim panel that snaps onto here. There's trim panels that snap onto there. That all broke when I was freaking taking this apart the first time. There's one more trim piece that snaps on up there. 
And then there's one more that snaps on here and your A pillars. They snap on right there and right there. Literally all that stuff could get put in in probably about 15 minutes, so. Yeah, I don't wanna put it on though because I don't know what I'm gonna do about the center console. If I do decide to build a custom center console, then all that stuff's gonna have to get taken back apart. So I don't wanna mess with any of that quite yet. Plus the truck is movable. And from what we're doing with it, we're just going to a couple shows where no one's gonna be up inside of it other than me driving it to and from the show or to and from the trailer to the show spot. So it doesn't really matter to me that the interior is kind of taken apart right now. It looks freaking fine. It's functional. So the heater core is replaced though. Bam, we got heat in the truck again. Uh, Show you where it's parking through over at the firewall real quick. Hang on one second. You know, as I was coming around over here, did I say porking through? I meant to say peeking through. It sounded like I said porking through. I meant to say peeking through. But anyways, now that we're in the engine bay, that new heater core, bam, look at those brand nice new fittings. Let's see here. Sneak the camera on through here. Like so. Bam. Great connections for the heater core. So I don't even have to mess with them like this because we'll be reconnecting up once this engine is out of here. And yeah, the whole engine bay will be empty. So I'll be able to get hoses on there without a problem at all. But just like that, another episode of the Killing a Resurrection. Tink, checked off the list and in the books, baby. So hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you all maybe learned a little something. If you do have a similar model to your truck and you're trying to replace your heater core, hopefully this video was able to help you all out. If you got any questions, hit me up in that comment section. Can't promise I'll be able to help you, but I'll give it my damn just to try. And uh, yeah. Hope you all enjoy the video. Thanks for watching, y'all. Oh, yeah, and one little detail that I forgot to mention. I didn't recharge the AC system. Obviously, you didn't see me doing it. Um, I'm going to go. It didn't make any sense to go ahead and charge it up. And then I'm going to have to take all the stuff apart when I pull that engine out here in a couple weeks. And I'm just going to a couple truck shows anyway. I'm not going to really be sitting in the truck for an extended period of time. So I don't really care if I have AC. So I left the AC decharged. It's not going to have any refrigerant in it. We're going to go ahead and we'll charge the system back up when the new motor's in there and the truck's all dialed in, getting ready to go again. So anyone that was following this video so that they could replace their own heater core, I didn't want them to be like, oh, well, hold on, my AC doesn't work. I don't have any refrigerant in it. Well, I didn't charge my system back up. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, y'all. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to check out future videos, subscribe to our channel. Hit that button right there. While you're at it, hit the like button at the bottom of your screen. You can also check out our website, killingitlifestyle.com. There you can follow the Killing It crew and order your own apparel so everyone will know you're killing it! Killin it.